Okay, so on this project I have a uh, piece of B-Mix clay that I made into a flower. I used one of uh, Debbie De La Cruz, hopefully I'm saying that right, cutters, and then I shaped it over one of the little um, cutie GR pottery forms and just had it up high enough that I could leave it flowing like a flower petal instead of an actual dish. So what I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to do a three color blend. I'm going to use 116 Florida Orange, 115 Tangerine Pill, and 112 Candy Apple Red. Okay, so I have those put out of my palette. So I'm also going to add to that equal parts of the CSP01 Gloss Medium NT Clear. So equal parts. And this is just so it shades and blends for me. I'm going to uh, take the medium Sumi brush. Okay, these are uh, the brushes that I designed oh, about 30 years ago, 29, 30 years ago. Always wet your brush first, blot out the moisture. You want to get the hairs wet, just like you would wet your hair before you would put shampoo in your hair, okay? Um, I tend to mix with the handle of my brush so that I don't waste a lot of product. Because if you did it with the hairs, then you're going to come in there and, and you've got to rinse it all out before you go to the next color. So um, this is something I've done for years. It just saves you product and money. So just make sure you get it mixed up uh, well enough that uh, you don't have that marbleized look to it. Okay. All right, so we're going to start with the light color on the outside. So I'm just fully loading the brush. Okay, let me come in just a little bit closer. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to pat that color on the outer edge. I'm not going to worry about the sides. Okay, about halfway down that petal. And then I'm going to pick up, without rinsing the brush, pick up a generous amount of the tangerine that has the medium. And I'm going to go down here towards the center. And I'm going to walk it back. More product. And you're blending it. You're overlapping and blending that into that first color. See how it just gradually blends? Then with that in your brush, you're going to pick up the red. And you're going to add the red at the center of the flower where it's going to be deeper and shaded and I keep working it back and forth until I get it like I want it now you could bring some of this aim your brush to the side and you could bring it up the side if you wanted to just for a little more shadow if you need to rinse your brush I don't need to do this, but I'm going to show you how to do it. If you get out of the area, because you're going to have color on the next petal, where you don't want it, but say you don't want it in the center here, where your center is going to be, you could just push it back. Because you've got that gloss medium in the color, it keeps it open longer and allows you to blend and shade. So I'm just getting most of that moisture out of my brush before I pick up color. Fully load that brush. Aim that color, aim the brush where you want it. You wouldn't come at it this way because you'll end up with a straight line. So aim it where the color should be. And I'm just patting and I'm not lifting off of the piece. I'm literally just bouncing the color on. When I lift, I'm going to go get color. Okay. Turn it around because we want, I'm going to put a little bit more of that orange back in it. Pick up the tangerine, and I'm going to start down at the bottom, or the center of the flower. Pick up more, and you're going to meet it and overlap it into the first color. So whatever color uh, you might be using, maybe you want yellows or blues, you're still going to do the same thing. Start with your light medium and then you're going into your dark down here at the base 
and then as I go up the edge we're going to add some additional shading later but as you go up the side be sure and aim that brush and we're going to do multiple coats we're not just going to leave it with this when you're done with the dark just wipe wipe on your sponge okay and go back into the light don't rinse it you're just going to waste product so tap that on pat it on bounce it on however you want to refer to it get a nice it's almost like putting two coats on because i'm trying to get a nice coverage and then pick up your tangerine and bring that back into and overlap and because I have the orange on my brush first when you push the brush down it's just going to fade the tangerine up into the orange and that's what gives you that nice transition of color and allows it to blend so this is considered a three color blend is what I call it Okay, wipe out your dark, go to your next one. Light on the tips or the outer edge of the petal. I'm just making, I'm turning my brush over as I'm working too, just to get the color off the other side. Put a little bit of orange back in, add the tangerine. So if you feel like you've used all of that first color out of your brush, there, um, then that's why I put a little bit more back in there so that it would, when I push down, it's going to fade into the orange that was there first. And then work it up and overlap it into that. Now on the first coat, sometimes it will look a little lined, meaning one color looks like you can see where it stops and starts but by the time you get the second coat on there that will soften and not be as noticeable wipe wipe and i'm going to have to mix up some more of the orange better that you have to mix up more than do too much and uh, waste it especially because you're mixing the gloss medium into it and you can't put it back in your bottle so be aware and even if you got a little more gloss medium in a more medium than color it's okay don't fret over it or think you have to remix it's okay it'll work out just fine okay and this being B-Mix or Cone 5.6 clay, it does absorb the product so much more than what your um, earthenware would if you were doing it with earthenware. And the same process would be on your earthenware. Or maybe you have a piece of this that is the shape of a flower. Maybe the petals are different. You could do the same technique on it. Try to think outside the box and let your imagination be your limitation. Grab your dark. Start where it's the darkest and then work your way back or up the edges. Like I said, I'm going to come in and do some shading. I'm not real worried. I'm going to take some of that red off my brush. Yeah, just keep going back and forth and working it. Work it until you get it like you want it. Don't just do one time across it. 
because then you get lots of lines and brush marks. Even though this is a very soft bristle brush, it still is going to show that pouncing motion that you're doing. So that's why I'm going back and forth over it a couple of times to get that worked in. Work it, bring it back up, grab your dark. Tap it in place. And when you start with any of the colors, if you'll start in the center of the area, like in the middle here, and then work it to the right and work it to the left, you'll have a better distribution of color. Because otherwise, if you start on one side and go to the other, you've got heavy color here, and then you have less when you get to the other side. Just keep adding your color as you feel like you run out. Blend it up into that other. Grab your dark. Tap it at the bottom. Kind of bring it back up the petal a little bit. Up the edges if you want. Okay, so it already looks really cute. Okay, now another little trick, if you haven't watched some of my other videos, the Statler Tri Plus Fine Liners. So this was my last one. So this is the number one. I'm going to mark that there because as it dries, you can see that this is a little chalkier, drier as it gets around. But if I had to walk away and to come back, I may not have known, especially as I start my second coat, okay? That will help you keep track of where you're at. All right, so let's, you can do two coats right away and then let it dry if you plan on doing a third coat. Um, it really depends on how heavy your application is, whether you need a third coat. If you're a heavy glazer, then I would say two would be fine. If you're really light and you're piddling with it, then do three. And you're going right over, you're doing the exact wet on wet. You want to do one petal at a time. If you were doing a leaf with three different greens or two different greens, do one at a time. You need wet on wet to get this blending to work. <coughs> Excuse me. So wet on wet, that's the key. Wipe, wipe, going this way. I had to stop and think about it. <laughs> Turn it, pick up the tangerine. Okay, so I am going to keep working on this, and then when I get to the next step of shading, then I'll come back on and tell you how we're going to do that.
Okay, so I'm going around the edges and putting that orange up here around the top. And because this, uh, the edges are raised, or the petals are raised, they don't set flush, um, I'm going to do the back also, but I'm going to do it with just color, not with a medium, so that you can see the difference. Or we'll just do it as a test to see if there is any color difference. Now, having the gloss medium in with the color, again, the word medium in the toll industry is an opener and extender. So same thing applies here. It keeps the color open longer, allows you to blend and manipulate. So if you're one that maybe you're not getting a good blend just using the pure color, that could be um, something you want to look into, into adding the gloss medium. Now, if you're on earthenware, definitely the medium. That's the way I've done it for many years. 20 plus years. This uh, cone 5.6 is more porous and it tends to lend itself to the blending a little easier than the earthenware does. Now I'll have to do another coat on that. But that at least gets it on, gets it on there. All right, so I'm going to let this dry so that I can flip it over and do the other side. Okay, so for the back side, I'm just, I've put out the pure color. I didn't add any medium to it. And we're going to do it the same way. Just remember your center is clear down here. Of course, we won't have an actual center on the... Um, Backside, because of the fact um, the you, you have to dry fit, because this is cone 5-6. So there won't be any yellow center that we're going to do on the other side. And I do have my wax on the bottom. So you can see it blends pretty good. Um... The color appears a little bit stronger, which is correct, because you don't have it. You're, you've thinned it with some glaze is what you've done. And I forgot to wipe the dark out. So you're doing the same process as you did on the front. So if you can move quick enough, um, you don't have to put the um, gloss medium in there. But if you work slower and you find that you're having a hard time getting the colors to transition and blend, then I would go to the mixing equal parts with the gloss medium. And you would still do this um, with two coats because once again your first coat tends to be a little more lined meaning you see like start and stop lines between the colors and then the second coat usually blends that and works it in And you could even, I may do a third coat on the 
front and just do it with the pure color. See how much brighter that is? This is more chalkier because you've added glaze to it. Now, you still will get the same color value on the front, but you have to put on possibly the three coats depending on how light your application is. So keep that in mind. Two coats minimum for me personally to get the nice intense colors. And if you want it lighter, then, you know, less coats. And if you've got a nice blend, but see, I can see, I can see light, medium, dark. So I like to go over it multiple times, but you may find um, you can adapt this technique and get the coloring that you want. Something black there. There we go. Wipe out. So I'm fully loading on that first color, really keeping my brush loaded. And you need to turn your piece. You need to aim the brush where you want that color. Because if you don't, you're going to see an exact line. Oops. From one color to the other. Because if I was aimed this way, I would see an exact line of the tangerine. Whereas I'm with this direction, when I'm pushing down on the brush, it's bleeding into the last color that was on the brush which is the color at the top here and makes it look like it just transitions from one color to the other. Wipe, wipe. back into that other color and then add your dark. And more rinse. Also going to mark where I started Fully load and do it again. Constantly turning. Aim that color. You're going right over the top of both of those colors. You're repeating the steps the same way. Don't avoid the red area because you're just going to layer that on top of it. Okay.
And the second coat goes much quicker than the first, which is nice because you've already got the hard work done. It's absorbed into the bisque. Again, this is 04 Stoneware B Mix by Laguna. But it would work on any um, any clay body. Lighter preferred that it's going to show up your colors. You go to a darker clay body and um, the colors are going to change. They're not going to be the same. So always do test. Test your application. Test the clay body that you're working on. And then you know what the colors are going to do for you. And even the temperature you fire to could make a difference. The clear glaze that you put over it can make a difference. I have found here lately that I am liking the Mako SW004 Zinc Free Clear. That tends to work the best for me right now. I have used um, Jessica's 2167. I use the Amico HF9. I'm finding the zinc free is better, but for whatever reason, the Mako is giving me a better color and it's holding some of those pinks and purples that sometimes burn out with some of the other. So make yourself a color wheel. Um, I've got a template on the website for the color concentrates and I will put one up there for the color strokes. It's on a blog page so you can download that. It's free. And then I did um, another video that um, has how to use the writer bottles, how to take your bottles and add the cap and tip and you can actually write with them and write the numbers and or a recipe or anything. That you want. Any of my one and two ounce bottles, the piping cap kit accessory kit uh, lids fit those bottles, whether it's um, the color concentrates or the color strokes, either one. So they basically you turn them into a writer bottle. You don't have to put your color in another bottle with a tip. You just take this cap and put it on your bottle. You take off the flip top and add that on there and it works great. Less waste because you're not having to put it in another bottle and clean that up. And you just switch the tops off. chunk of something there. I didn't shake it up as well as I should have. All right. Okay, so how pretty that is. So we will let that dry and then I'll work on the front but that has two coats on it. Okay, so now we are going to do some shading on top of what we've got here. So, I move this over so you can see. 
bring my water basin and I'm gonna back off just a little bit. Okay. So I'm gonna water load. I'm gonna get some of my cleaner water and I'm gonna drag off to a point. So you continuously just keep dragging it to remove the excess water. Should you feel if you you can like do a quick blot on the paper towel, but be careful because you need water to make this happen. Then I'm going to tip into the pure color. This is the 112 candy apple rib. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down towards the center and I'm going to intensify what's already there. And then kind of bring it up the side to divide the petal. So rinse, drag it off to a point, tap if you need to. Touch it down, and I started in the center, and I worked myself to the right and to the left. So sit it down, sit it down, mush, 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 walk it to the right, and walk it to the left. Constantly rinse your brush, blot if you need, quickly, don't leave it on the paper towel. It's going to draw up too much of the liquid. Start in the middle, work it to the right, work it to the left, and then come up those sides. I think I have enough water, so I'm going to go ahead and do the next one. Rinse. Tip into the color. Tuck the color where you want it to go. And the reason you start in the middle of that area is so that the color is evenly dispersed across that shaded area. You start over here, remember it's going to be dark and you'll have less on your brush by the time you get to the other edge. And then you've got one side darker and one side lighter. Constantly rinse your brush, drag off to a point, tip into the color, set it down, set it down, mush, 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 back to the middle, walk it to the right, walk it to the left, and then you can come up. Okay, now we're going to do, so I rinsed again, water load, drag off to a point. We're going to do what I call, I'm going to blot just quickly, what I call a tuck and slide. So here where the center is, where that little dip, I'm going to make it look like it's kind of folded. So I'm going to shade on both sides of that. So I'm going to start up here and pull. Put a little bit more red back on your brush. Tiny bit. Doesn't take much. And now on this side, I'm going to tuck and slide. So we'll let that dry and you can see what it's going to look like. Now you don't have to do that on every one. You could just, you know, maybe you just have one here. It's going to be hard for me not to do it though. So you've got one that's stronger, one that's, see, you've got more color here and less up there. Water is your friend. And you could go around and do all of one side. So let me try to move this to the side so that you can see. So I'm patting it down, brushes down full contact with the piece and sliding it. If you like to do square shader floating, you can do that. But this is just a way, if you've got the semi brushes, it's a way for you to block in, do your blending, and then you can come back and do your shading also, which is kind of nice. That way it helps on expenses. 
You don't have to have another brush. So if I want, if I feel like that's got too much of a harsh stopping point, all I'm doing is just taking water on my brush and just gently bringing it up to soften that. And you can do that because of the fact that you have the um, gloss medium with your color underneath. So it, it basically it's an insurance coat, see a hair, um, that if you've got that underneath, then you can uh, come back and work and some kind of a hair fabric or something um work that in you can also do this coming up and i'm still using the medium semi brush you can do it coming up from the bottom also so if you wanted a couple little lines that come from this direction So it's like a, where the gathers of the petal it makes it darker, the folds. Now we can come back and reinforce with a liner brush. You just quickly put it on there. I'm touching and just pull. So that adds some depth. Now we can do the same thing on the back. I'm not going to do them from the top, but you could come in here and just create some different links. That one skipped on me. I'm trying not to get my hand in the wet on the other side. I turned it too much. Constantly rinsing and reloading. Okay. I know it doesn't look like much yet, but when that dries, it will. Okay, so for the centers of the flower, let's do um, 123 sunflowers. And we're going to use the uh, stubby brush, the Colors for Earth stubby brush. It's a mongoose hair. It's a filbert, meaning it's like a cat's tongue. It's rounded. And what I like to do is stipple, no water on this one, load the brush, and I want you to pounce it out, give it a bad hair day, I call it. And then you're going to stipple in, I'll move that water back out of the view now, so you can see more. So let's come a little bit closer, maybe. So load, stipple that out, pounce it out, and the reason I'm doing this is because it gives uh, more coats in some areas, you have, so you'll get highs and lows, dark and light. 
and it gives it more of a textured look to it. So one good, maybe two coats if you're a light application. And you can see that there's some areas where it looks darker and some lighter. All right, so then we can take 125 Curry. Don't rinse your brush. Grab some of that. Let's work that into the bristles. I still don't think I got it. I want a really fuzzy look to it. Now this time, you're just going to kind of tickle, I call it. You're just barely touching. And you want to change. Watch the flag on the end of the brush. You want to change the direction of your brush so that you don't have what I call rabbit tracks. You don't have a pattern that's forming because you're constantly turning the handle of the brush. Okay. So I'm making one side a little wider and the other side not so much. I'm going to grab some of this that I stippled out and I can come in and create like a little divot. And then I'm going to take um, 160 Key Lime and I'm going to add some of this to the center just as a little bit of a highlight. I'm going to wipe that yellow off of my brush on the paper towel. And then I'll pick up the green and do the same thing. Give it a bad hair day. Fuzzy. I think I've got a little too much in there. I'm going to pounce some more of that out. And then I'm going to add this off to one side. Constantly changing. So it just adds a little bit of a lighter coloring to one side. Okay. All right. So then we can add some 186 burnt sienna. Won't take very much. Make sure you've got that brush as dry as you can get it. I'm going to pounce it out. Get just a tiny bit of that. See, it's, it's very fuzzy. And then now be really, really careful because it doesn't take much. I'm just barely touching the tips of that brush. Hopefully you can see that I'm just barely tickling, constantly changing the direction of my brush, maybe a little bit here in that center. It's better to go light and you can add more. It's harder to take it off. Okay, I'm going to rinse that brush, and I'm going to get my liner brush, that's not the one I want, I want the number 2, 3600 number 2 liner, wet your brush. We're going to go back to the red, and it's thin enough. If it was thicker, you could add some water to thin it down, but I'm just going to load that, pull it through to make sure I have it nicely loaded. Take all the water off of your ferrule if you have any. You don't want that running 
down onto your uh, piece and messing you up. So now you can come in here with some lines, fine lines, different lengths. to reinforce that shading. I'm just working on the tippy toes of that brush, meaning the very, very tip. You can bring some longer, long and short, don't have them all the same length, makes it more interesting. If you press down harder, you're going to get thicker lines. If you stay up on the tip, you're going to get thin lines. See, it gives it depth. It's already, you can see it, you can tell that it's a curved piece that it goes and dips down in there just by adding. Every time you add another layer, it just helps with your shading. It intensifies the other color that's there. I'm going to go back over this one a little bit. I know it's dry, but I want to add... I was a little light-handed when I started. Isn't that pretty? Bring a couple more. Okay, you could do the same from the outside if you wanted, but I think I'll leave that. You can also go back to that um, 186 that I had out here and if you wanted with the tip of your brush you could even come in here a little bit stronger just by tapping the end of the brush just tap 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 and reinforce some of that because it's going to give it a bigger uh, pattern and make it look more shaded. I mean, you could come in here with black, but I don't know. When I work, I just build it as I go, and if I want to intensify it, I add more. So as you are working on it, you'll say, you know what, I think I really want this, or I want that. But see how that makes it look so dimensional? Isn't that pretty? You can see it's like, I don't know, this is probably, that's as long as my finger, so in, almost two inches as far as the height of it. Now you could do the same on the back if you wanted the lines back there. I think I'll just leave it like that so that you can see the difference because these are more of the um, like the wrinkles, the stamens coming out. Um, I'm debating whether I want to put black on it or not. We do need to go around that edge again with the orange. And that was the pure orange we put on there. Just so it isn't really light. The 
hopefully this gives you some ideas. Um, and it doesn't even have to be a flower shape. It could be um, a cup and you make it look like a flower. I've done that. I have a uh, packet called uh, Ladybug Luncheon set that has some stripes on it and then the cup it's like a cup and a tray for like a soup and sandwich and the cup has this same type of flower i made the cup into a flower the center of the cup was the center of the flower it was very popular years and years ago i don't remember 2013 is when i did that one so it's been a while 10 years holy cow yeah if you're watching this it is uh what is today 16th of well this may not be out there but anyway it's 2023 and my original one of these like i said it was on a cup and saucer and it was back in uh, 2013. I don't know why I stopped. I wasn't where I was ready to be. Or did I get there? I guess I've already done that. Okay. Good enough. I don't think it'll matter that much. Alright, what do you think? Should we add black? Let's add some black. Let me clean out my center here. Let's get some uh, CC 101. Maybe. My labels are really, oops, really worn off. I use them so much. I'm going to use that same liner brush, the number two liner. And I'm just going to grab a little bit of water. And then one corner, pull that through, really get it nice and loaded. All right, here we go. What do you think? I like that. Same thing, different links. Now, I've got thicker lines here, so I need some thicker. Well, didn't need to be that thick, Paula. Oh, well. So you even it out so that your eye is not drawn to that. So I'll make a couple of them thicker along the way This just adds more depth, detail. Okay, since we've got it there, we really need it in the center also. So I'm going to again. I'm going to, um, actually I'm going to switch, 
And I'm going to go to, um, this is a small wipeout tool, RD411 on the website. And I'm going to come in here and add more pronounced. You could do it with the brush if you want, but with this, I can kind of catch the edge of those lines. And every time you dot, it'll make smaller dots, so it's larger when you start. And then as you keep dotting, there's less on your tool, and then they will be smaller. And it doesn't matter if you're using the handle of a brush or what you're using. That's true. I'm kind of catching the edge where the orange and the yellow meet so it's less noticeable by adding some of this. So I am going to go ahead and go all the way around, but I just won't have it. I'm going to have it heavier or more of them on one side. See that I mean it just gives it so much depth. I think. All right, so now I'm still looking at it, thinking, does it need anything else? Do I want to do? These will be softer um, when they fire. Uh, one of the other little tricks, uh, if I've got any water left in here. So just water and a soft mister. If I spray this, it's going to show you what it's going to look like. More of what it's going to look like when it's fired, okay? Those black are still pretty wet, so I'm not going to pick Kenya. And my water is less of it. Hold on. You can kind of say it's speckledy, but I ran out of water. But so if you'll spray it, it'll it'll make it pop and show you, like I said, more of what it's going to look like when it's fired. So you can say, oh, do I need to add some more, less? Of course, in the back we don't do the center, okay, because it's got the it's dry fitted, okay. You could do dark around the edges if you wanted. Um, we could float some color around the edge. Do I want to do that? No, but you know what we can do? We can take the stubby and I'm going to go into the red, the 112, pounce it out, bad hair day, and I can take and just kind of pull Can you see that? It's what we call dry brushing. And so I can kind of go up and then I'm going between where I put those shading lines. That's kind of cool. I'm going to go this way so I can put my finger down and hold myself in place. Bounce it out. Feather. So you're just catching just the tip of that brush. So 
as I said before, I just I build it as I go. And if I want more, I just keep adding more. Until I get it what in my eye is what I want. And you know, stop when you want to stop. It's your flower. first couple ones I didn't do as much on. And every layer you add, you're going to deepen what you're doing. Oh, I like that. Look at that. So this makes it, looks like it's folded down in. Think of that. Isn't that cute? I love it. Love it, love it, love it. All right, there you go. So you've learned three color blending, uh, shading, tuck and slide shading, detailing, texture for the center, and then dry brushing with the underglaze on the edges. Okay, so there you go. I hope you'll try this and I'd love to see what you do. Be sure and tag me, post on Facebook. All right, guys, happy painting.